Hi everyone, welcome back to AgriClarity, your one-stop solution for all agriculture-related examination. So today we'll be discussing important monthly current affairs of I uh, of uh, August month, which are particularly focused for the AFO aspirants. Okay, so before starting to before starting the today's session, I would like to put a disclaimer here that this session is generally targeted for only I AFO aspirants, right? So the content curated here are generally uh, taken from the Ministry of Agriculture and we have curated the content from uh, by referring the official government website PIB. Okay, so I hope this session would be will be very helpful for your mains examination. Okay, because uh, every year and then two to three or you can say max max five questions are asked from the current affairs. Uh, they are generally targeted uh, the I mean the schemes part. Okay, and if there is any uh, mentioning of any particular community or there is any uh, particular uh, financial assistance has been enhanced for a particular community, whether it be horticulture or, or economic uh, crops. So that is why uh, we have to cover uh, the all the news uh, which are uh, which have mentioned these all uh, characteristics, right? So let's start with the today's session and uh, this uh, month has very uh, less amount of uh, current affairs for you all. So it will be very helpful for, uh, or you can say you have very less burden to memorize the current affairs of this month, right? So the first question, first uh, news was regarding the enhancement of financial assistance under the national uh, mission on the edible oils. Okay, so from here you can see that the national mission on edible oils uh, gains one of the most important uh, for the AFO examination, right? So you should remember all the properties of the, uh, like what is the launch year, what are the assistance given, what are the, uh, I mean, what are the components, okay? What are the norms, what are the eligibility criteria, all about all of these things of this particular mission, right? And you'll get these all uh, news in more, uh, you can say more, uh, uh, comprehensive way in the PDF provided on the uh, IOPS AFO mentorship program. Okay, on our available on our uh, website, right? So the first question says that there is there has been an enhancement of financial assistance under the national mission on edible oils. So let's see what are the financial assistance given under the scheme. Okay. So far for the planting material, they, there is assistance of 20,000 rupees per hectare for indigenous uh, varieties, okay? And 29,000 per hectare for the imported seedlings, including the transport cost, okay? And then there is management of gestation period, or there is a four period gestation period, okay? In which uh, 42,000 per hectare is given for the gender states and 50,000 is given for the North Central as there are... Uh, uh, why the northeastern region have more assistance? Why? Because uh, mo the people there generally are not focused or we can say to uh, have uh, or you can say to encourage them uh, in order to uh, involve in these uh, production of the edible oils. Okay. So that is why uh, the government is trying to provide more assistance so that they can encourage the farmers there to uh, step in to uh, step in in the uh, edible oil production there okay right then intercropping inputs are also given okay assistance for the intercrop inputs to sustain farmers till palm is mature okay then seed and gardens nursery uh, garden nurseries assistance is also given this is one of the important question there was question regarding uh, the seed gardens and nursery of the edible oil mission uh, in the mains examination objective in the objective part, right? So more than 15 hectare uh, seed garden, uh, any person having or any farmer having more than 15, uh, 15 hectare land for seed garden, they can avail the assistance, okay? Uh, then 80, they can get 80 lakh with the rate of interest and 100 lakh for the northeastern region, okay? Then again, 40 lakh is given for the nursery and 50 lakh is given for the nursery in the northeastern region. Then also, they also provide drip irrigation assistance under the PM Krishi Sichai Yojana norms. Okay. Then water infrastructure and compost units are also provided under MIDH, which is 
मिशन ऑन इंटीग्रेटेड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर एंड पीएम कुसुम नॉज फॉर द स्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ द सोलर पम्प एंड बोरवेल्स ओके देन हार्वेस्टिंग टूल्स आर ऑल्सो गिवन लाइक कटर वायर मैश ओके मोटराइज चीजल पोर्टेबल लैडर चाफ कटर ट्रैक्टर ऑल दीज थिंग्स यू कैन सी माइंड even uh, little or we can say the smallest equipment are also uh, given as an assistance under this mission so how much government is focusing on the uh, production of edible oil so that our country becomes uh, self sufficient in the edible oil uh, production right then they also provide uh, assistance to custom hiring centers like 25 lakh per unit for equipment training and maintenance for ssd fpus and processors and the states also okay then training programs are also given like uh, farmers with uh, are provided with 30000 rupees per two days of training uh, with a maximum limit of 30 participants at a one time okay then officers are all, also provided which are involved in the training of these farmers uh, they can get 40000 per day uh per day two day there is two day training for and the maximum batch holds are uh, up to 20 officers okay then again replanting of old gardens 50% of co uh, cost uh, at the rate of uh, 250 rupees per plant is given for uprooting or replanting after the 25 to 30 years okay then also research and development in center of excellence assistance are also provided under this scheme so in this way we have covered all the financial assistance or we can say the factual uh, thing which is very important for this mission right moving on to the next question uh, next uh, uh, current affairs which is minimum support price okay so uh, this news is very important you must re uh, remember all the uh, msp of the kharif crop okay here we have provided the kharif crop table and here is the rabi crop table okay so all the major community you feel like which is important like you have to remember uh, like for the paddy okay then bajra ragi okay and arhar moong urd are very important why because government is focusing on the pulse mission okay so that is why you have to remember the pulses as well then cotton is very easy you can remember like 7 uh, 7 10 and 8 1 1 0 so it is very easy to remember okay then the maximum and the lowest uh, commodity price sh should be also uh, taken care of, okay so then again wheat barley and gram chana these all pulses should be uh, i mean these all should these all msp should be i'm sorry these all sh uh, msp should be very carefully uh, memorized right so let's see what are the ana analytical insights can be uh, concluded from the msp okay so the highest msp for the kharif season is for the sesmum uh, which is 9846 per quintal followed by niger seed and for the msp for the rabi the masoor uh, holds a max position with 6700 per quintal and uh, if we talk about the all season pulses fo uh, focus the government is very consistent with the strategy to reduce the import dependence by the mission pulses mission atmanirbharta in pulses okay in edible oils and pulses linked with the national mission on the edible oils and the national mission on national food security mission right then the msp also shows that there is a balanced growth aim given like they uh, the msp is also focusing on the nutri seeds like millets ragi baja and jowar aligning with the international year of the millets which was in the year 2023 okay and if you talk about the institutional mechanism of the msp which is very important the uh, sometimes question can be asked from here also so which are, which committee or which uh, institute which entity is import uh, is uh, i mean it is involved in the recommendation of sp which is the uh, that is the cacp commission for the agriculture cost and prices and the formula which are used for formulating these msps are a2 plus fl plus 50 which is very important again for this examination right so apart from these you will also get more in that uh, content provided in the pdf so i'll i am repeating uh, again and again so that uh, all the students who are enrolled enrolled in the mentorship program they should not be uh, worrying about uh, noting these all things they can get the magazine of the current affairs available on the uh, c4s courses website right next we have tobacco processing and value addition infrastructure as i said earlier if there is any mentioning of any particular commodity in uh, uh, i mean uh, in the 
in the news you should be familiar with the uh, areas targeting uh, or we can say package of practices of that particular community like tobacco you should be familiar what are the uh, intercultural practices what are the pests of the tobacco what are the diseases of the tobacco okay so uh, we have also provided what are the uh, i mean the this talking about this particular news i have also provided the the uh, tobacco processing and value addition infrastructure uh, news what was the concern about the what was the concern of this news okay and uh, what are the role of the tobacco board i have also given in the pdf okay apart from this uh, let's see one thing was mentioned in the uh, pib so i felt that i should discuss here so there was a institute uh, given there which is icr ni NIRCA, which is in Rajamundri. Okay, Rajamundri. So the full for, full form of this institute is National Institute for Research on Commercial Agriculture, which was earlier known by Central Tobacco Research Institute. So that is why I have given here, right? So the function where they conduct research and varietal development in multiple types of tobacco suited for the in, Indian diverse, India's diverse agroclimate, and they are were also involved in the production, protection, and leaf quality improvement technologies. And they also disseminate the good agriculture practices, which are very important to obtain a standard uh, level of tobacco leaves. Okay, so this was it. Moving on to the next question and sorry, next news, which is National Handloom News. One of the most important and one of the most important uh, or recurring uh, news, which is favorite of uh, IBPS. Uh, okay, so most of the examinations which are conducted by IBPS, they uh, I. Uh, we have seen that they are uh, uh, they have uh, asked about the handloom day uh, about the handloom day in one shift or another okay so that is why i have give, uh, i mean uh, came with i came with this news okay so the national handloom day is celebrated annually to uh, represent the swadeshi movement in the year 1905 which is launched as a symbol to a uh, symbol of economic resilience and indigenous pride okay so in the 2015 it was inaugurated by uh, our honorable prime minister and the objective was to honor the indian weavers promote the handloom heritage and strengthen the vocal for local and atmanirbhata bharat initiatives right and this year it was the 11th edition so uh, they were different awards uh, which are very important you should be familiar if you are uh, preparing for the AV AFO examination or whether it be Nabad examination, this is very important. Just uh, see what are the names of the awards. Okay. So, like there is Sant Kabir Awards, there is National Handloom uh, Award. I mean, awards is also given. Okay. And uh, this all things are there. And uh, the awards are given under the uh, Handloom Marketing Assistance as a part of National Handloom Development Program. Okay. Apart from these all things, I have also provided uh, the history of the Handloom uh handloom day and uh, what are the theme of the handloom this year okay and uh, uh, what are the global statistics and what are the what what is the india's position in handloom all these things are given in the pdf okay so i have not given here why because uh, otherwise this session would be very will get very long okay so this is uh, this session is generally uh, you can say it is very uh, um fast revision of these news okay so you can revise your news very fastly from here okay moving on next question uh, next uh, current affairs is uh, there was a news regarding the national policy to promote the globally important agricultural heritage systems which are GIAS sites in the India okay so again it is very important as there is specific sites are mentioned with the uh, one of the prominent institutes, uh, FAO designated. So that is why this news becomes very important. So India currently has three FAO designated GIAS sites recognized for their traditional, sustainable and biodiverse agriculture system. And Government of India supports these sites through the WITH schemes, RK uh, Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana and Mission for Integrated Development of Horticulture Schemes, okay, for the conservation, revival, and the value addition process. So let's see what are these sites. So the uh, these sites are launched by FAO, uh, United Nations, in the year 2002, and the objective were to identify and safeguard unique agriculture systems, uh, unique agriculture systems that sustain biodiversity, resilient ecosystems, and cultural heritage developed through co-evolution of human nature, human and nature. 
right so like uh, examples worldwide are very prominent which are rice terraces of philippines and ending potato system right and uh, the three gia sites are available uh, located where koraput uh, region of odisha and kuttanad farming system of kerala and saffron heritage of kashmir so these are very important question can be uh, can be asked from these regions okay what are the sites or what is gis so these all things can be asked right and which uh, institute or organization is involved in the launching of these sites right so let's see next news is 64th all india wheat and barley research workers workshop again uh, the community i mentioned here wheat and barley so that is why this news becomes very important so the sixth uh, this uh, workshop is generally a uh, that annual platform for reviewing the research and development progress in the wheat and barley across the isr institutes and state agriculture universities so they are focused in enhancing the production productivity and cost efficiency of the wheat and barley cultivation in india okay so let's see what are the indus, india's uh, position india is self sufficient in wheat and rice production whereas they india's focusing should focus should be now on reducing the cultivation cost to make the farming more profitable okay and if we talk about the production growth of these two entities sorry so the production growth is uh, wheat production rose from 86.5 million tons to 117 million tons this year which is uh, which is around 44% increase in the 10 to 11 years and next goal is to uh, raise per hectare productivity to match the global average okay so this was it all the news of the agriculture i mean we can say ministry of agriculture which are very important for the afo aspirants and this was it uh, if you have any doubt please let us know in the comments below and uh, all the mentorship students they are advised to see the uh, pdf available on the c4s courses website to get the more comprehensive uh, magazine of the uh, august ca okay so that was it thank you and have a nice day